Good morning. Good morning and welcome. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Couple announcements for you. Today, following worship, members are invited to stay uh, for a brief congregational meeting. Wednesday, uh, we will be talking about um, what's happening in the United Methodist Church. That meeting is at 6.30. Everyone is welcome. 
I won't be leading the meeting. Pastor, I'll be there, but Pastor Scott Gallagher will be leading the meeting. We'll be there to answer any and all questions that you have. So I hope you'll be able to join us. Tomorrow night via Zoom is our worship team meeting. If you're on that, that team, we're looking forward to beginning that discussion. After worship today, um, there is our fellowship time. So I hope you'll stay for some, some goodies, some, some good treats. Are there any other announcements? It is hot in here. Um, so if you feel the need to uh, do this, please do so. And um, let us think cool thoughts as we begin our worship praise of God this morning. Will you please rise as we center ourselves for worship? With gifts of praise, we come to worship. With heartfelt prayers, we come to worship and pray. With open minds eager to grow, we come to worship and grow this day. Please remain standing as we join together in affirming our faith. I refuse to believe that I am powerless. I refuse to believe that injustice and hatred are simply the way it has to be. I refuse to believe that I am better or more deserving than my neighbor. I refuse to believe that my self-worth is rooted in my accomplishments or appearance. I refuse to believe that the church is dying because I see God all around me. I refuse to believe that the traditions of old are the only path for moving forward. 
I refuse to believe that I cannot make a difference. So with hope in my heart, I will strive to live a life of courage, conviction, and compassion, just as Jesus taught us. Amen. standing as we sing our first hymn. May be seated. Now is the time of sharing our joys and concerns. Please be in prayer for the Matthew family. Janelle Matthew's uh, grandfather passed away this week, so please hold them in prayer. Please pray for Ron Brogren as he uh, travels back home tomorrow. Please be in prayer for Marlene Johnson, who's having surgery tomorrow. Keep her in prayer. Other joys and concerns. Wendy, how's your sister? 
Not good. Yeah, please continue to pray for um, Wendy's sister. I'm sorry. Is that God saying, I know her name? I know her name. That's what God is saying. Um, so, so say it again. Judy Wells, please be in prayer, not only for her, but those who are caring for her and her family as um, she's not doing so well and she is in need of, of our prayers. Other joys and concerns. DJ. Okay, let us pray for Randy. He's having uh, DJ's son. He lives in Florida. Let us be in prayer for him. Other joys and concerns. Joyce, Joyce and Bob Catterson. Uh, I was there, I don't know, the other night. And, um, she's, she's really in a lot of pain, and they're both very frail. Okay. I talked to them. Chris wants us to know that um, Joyce Patterson is in a lot of pain. Will you please continue to pray for her? Um, Chris talked to them, and they're both very frail. So please hold them in prayer. Bob. And they said it wouldn't last. <laughs> Second year anniversary. Congratulations. Samantha. He's dealing with in Taiwan. Samantha's boyfriend is in the Marine Corps. He is um, dealing with the tensions in Taiwan, and it must be very hard for you to be away from him. Yes, it is scary, and especially with those tensions over there. So we will be praying for him. Will you make sure we get his address? We're pretty good about writing to, sending cards to those who are, um, who are overseas. Okay, thank you. I, I saw another hand, didn't I? Did I see another? Am I making that up? All right. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Not even loud music or sirens, God, can drown out our praise for you. You are one God. You are holy and magnificent, and your grace is loud. Even when we feel like we can't hear it. We give you thanks, God, for the opportunity to gather and praise your name. We give you thanks, God, for the blessings in our life, the people that surround us, who hold us up. God, we pray for those who are hurting, who are having challenges with their health. Who are seeking to be whole. Let us be still, God. Let us understand 
that you are in control, even when everything around us feels out of control. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is from the book of Luke, uh, chapter 14, verses 1 and 7 through 15. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose their place of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come to you and say, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers and sisters or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case that they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? You have created a table and you have invited us to sit. Turn our focus to you, O oh God. Amen. I get to do my fair number of weddings, and it's always interesting where the pastor is seated. As you know, if you've ever, if you've been to a wedding recently, there's usually uh, a seating chart at what table you're at or a little place card and you, you find your table and many, many, many times the pastor is um, seated in the back and a lot of weddings I've been seated with the photographer and um, you know other uh, vendors if you will. Every once in a while, I'll get moved forward, and it's, it's always a surprise. Today, I want you to think about where you're sitting in church. Now, some of you are going to say, Joanne, she's smiling. She's seating. She's, she's right where she always sits, and don't you dare sit in her place. No, I'm kidding. <clears throat> some of you are in the seats that you've always been in. But some of you, like Erin, is she's sitting in the back. 
Some of you, like Phil and Ruth, are seated up, up front. And I wonder why you chose the seat you chose. No, I'm not going to call on you. You can rest easy. The scripture this morning, Jesus has two messages. The first message is to those who are trying to get a good seat. And we always want to get a good seat. Even if the good seat's in the back or the good seat's in the front, in your perspective, you want a good seat. In the time of Jesus, being invited to a, a, a dinner was a sign of status. And you would think that the tables were kind of like we have now, like the long tables, and, and at the head of the table is the, the person of importance. And then everybody goes down. But in the time of Jesus, the, the tables were in a U. And the person in, of, of honor was seated in the flat part of the U. And then everyone came like this. So unlike the way we have the tables now that are kind of straight down, lin very linear, and you really can't see the person at the end of the table, the U kind of is a better setup because everybody can see everybody. However, back in those days, sitting next to the, to the host was where you wanted to be. The scripture begins with Jesus sitting down, and it is the Sabbath. And like last week's scripture, this, this story only appears in Luke. And once again, we are looking at the Pharisees and what they think and how they feel. They are paying attention. And Jesus uses this moment to teach them about what it means to be invited to dinner. Don't assume your place is next to the host. Don't assume that. Sit in a lesser seat. Feels odd to hear that. Because we assume through the message of Jesus that we are all invited to be next to Jesus. His story goes on. And he says, don't invite your friends, your family. Those are the safe people, the people you know, the people you feel comfortable with. Instead, invite the poor, the lame, those in need. You see, because in that culture at that time, if you invite me to dinner, I'm now obligated to invite you to dinner. And Jesus is saying, no, you want to invite someone to dinner that can never, ever pay you back. That's where the blessing is. But we do things to gain things. When I was at um, 
Chautauqua, there was a couple from another church in our conference, and they said that their church was having an argument, and they wanted to get um, my colleague and I, she's a pastor too, they wanted to get our opinion. The disagreement was over a welcome sign. You know, churches are really good at putting all our welcome, you are welcome, right? We're big into that. That's what we say. It's everywhere. And they wanted to get a bigger banner made that said, this is the debate. You are welcome, or just welcome, welcome here. But that wasn't enough. That not just the words, but the colors. What colors were they going to put on? And it gets even deeper. Do they put colors on that say, Black Lives Matter? Do they put colors on that say, um, um, you know, they wanted to do a, a, a group of people of different nationalities? Because this is in an area where there's um, a lot of, of, of mixed nationalities, and they wanted um, people to know. They wanted people to know that if you didn't have a lot of money, you were welcome. If you um, were mentally ill, you were welcome. And, and how are they going to put this all on one banner and there? became the argument, and they couldn't get a welcome banner through church council. It was a point of contention, and there were sides. Now, folks, let's think about this. We're going to fight over a welcome sign. We're fighting over a welcome sign. But it goes deeper goes deeper. I had just seen a quote, and it said, you may invite people to the party. You may invite them to the party, but it means nothing if you don't invite them to dance. You may invite people to the party, but it means nothing if you don't invite them to the dance. And it was my question to them, okay, you're saying you're welcome, come on in, be a part of our church, but what are you doing to make them feel comfortable? What are you doing to welcome them? Are you incorporating any traditions? Are you changing things up so that they feel safe, so that they feel that they can contribute? What are you doing? It is not enough to hang a sign. It is not enough to put all the symbols and colors and whatever you want out there. It means nothing. If your attitude is, I need to count you as a number, but this is our church, and your voice is not welcome. Part of the scripture today is to remind us that you can't just invite people to dinner But you have to honor who they are and what they bring to the proverbial table. You have to respect and welcome 
the person that they are. And that's not easy. I've told you before, I, I've been in churches where someone knocks on the door and they are not invited in. Their name is not asked. There are people that pull up at night to our giving box to take food that they need. And the giving box gives them their dignity because they don't have to knock at the door and tell you that they're hungry and justify what they need. The problem with a welcome sign is that's all it is, is a welcome sign. If we don't have a welcome sign in our attitude, in our hearts, in the way that we treat people who come in the door, then it means nothing, it's just a sign. And you're fighting over nothing. It matters when you say welcome that a person comes in and you genuinely care about them. We need to stop trying to drag people in to change our statistics. Jesus is reminding us that it's not about who is at your dinner as a place of status. It matters who is at your dinner as a way to honor God. Amen. Before we sing our next hymn, I would like to invite Erin Roos up front. She's going to yell at me later. Yep, she's going to yell. She nodded her head. Yep. You're going to get yelled at later. You look like you're ready to go to a Steeler game. She is going to the Steeler game. 
Aaron has been our administrative assistant for the last three years, and she has been blessed with an opportunity to go to Duquesne University, a uh, full-time position working in public safety. And um, we, are, we couldn't be more happy for her in, in this new uh, role. I have known Erin. She has been my administrative assistant for, uh, she served with me at another church, but it's, what, six years, yeah, long time. And she has been my nemesis, because she tells me about myself, <laughs> and that's, that's not always a bad thing. And she has been my friend. She has been my uh, partner in church crime, and um, I am going to miss her very much. And um, yeah, it's um, Aaron has um, has made things better, and um, I was wondering if we could take a moment to show her our thanks. as we sing our next hymn. Just a reminder before the benediction that church members are invited to stay uh, for a meeting and um, there will be refreshments afterwards. Let us receive God's blessing.
May God raise you up. May God hold you close. May you realize that you are valued, important, and wonderfully made. Amen.